All right, good afternoon, everybody. It's Jay again. So fast, cheap, and easy. Those are three words that seem to never work together. You always get two, and you never get all three. You might only get one of those things. But today we're gonna go over irrigation for fruit trees, and I'm gonna try to take a little bit of the, the mystery out of this, and I'm gonna show you guys how easy it is to set up your own irrigation system for your fruit trees or your food forest without breaking the bank. So this is a very, very inexpensive way to do it. I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I did it and which parts that I used. Now granted, I don't work for any of these companies and I didn't get any of these parts for free, obviously, but they're available at your local hardware store and they are very, very cheap. In fact, you wanna have extra parts on hand in case anything ever fails on you and it's very, very cheap with this system. And it's also very, very easy. You basically need no knowledge of plumbing to do this. And I'm gonna try to keep this video to about 30 minutes or under, which is probably more time than it's gonna take you to actually hook your irrigation system up. So I'm gonna go over a couple of different parts on this and the system that I use here. And I'm gonna try to take like I said, a little bit of that mystery out of this because it's a very simple, simple way of doing things. So there's basically just a couple components of an irrigation system if you think about it like this, okay? So think about it like a computer. There's gonna be several parts that work together to give you the best results. Well, I've figured out basically the best way to do this and the cheapest way to do this. And the main thing you're gonna to need to start with is a timer. So the timer, the timer is the brain of the system, basically. This is the part that is going to operate all of your valves. And your valves are these parts that I showed you earlier, these parts here. And you can think about these basically as like a knob for a hose. So all these do is turn something on and turn something off and they've got two wires that come off of each one of these, off of each one of these valves. They come off of this solenoid, which is this top piece here. And they all they do literally is turn on a hose and turn it off. So that's the easy way to think about this. And there's only two wires that come off of this. One of them is gonna be a, a positive that goes to your timer, and the other one's going to be a ground that goes to your timer. And this is all low voltage wiring so you're not going to get electrocuted on any of this wiring and i'll go over the wiring a little bit later here so really what you need to start with is the brains of the operation and that would be a timer so you need to pick yourself a good timer that works for you there are all kinds i've got several different kinds around here i've got wi-fi timers i've got just these regular timers but you always wanna make sure you get one that has enough stations on it. So get the one, get the biggest one you can get because it's not gonna be that much more than the cheaper one. So say the 12 station, I don't know, it's probably, I don't know, maybe 10 or $20 more than the six station. Well, the six station, you're gonna fill up probably and you're probably gonna need the 12. And so why bother expanding later with another timer if you can just get the 12? Now I've got two different timers out here running on this particular side because these two timers are running a whole bunch of valves and I'm gonna be adding some on today which I'll be going over those valves. So basically start with the brains of the operation and that is to get yourself a good timer. I like these orbit timers. They're very, very simple. You can put them outside or inside, they're waterproof. Uh, they've got a jog dial on them. They work great. They haven't seemed to fail on me at all whatsoever, but this is completely up to you what you want to buy. There's really fancy ones, you know, like the Beehive timer, and that one you can use Wi-Fi on your phone and control it and control the different stations with, with your phone, which is kind of nice, but they're also double the price. You know, they're probably around 120 for something like that that's, that's a little better as far as the timer goes. So once you start with this, this is the first thing you need to start with. And like I said, you can mount this either inside or outside. I have these two outside so that I can get to them. And then the only thing they need to reach is a plug. So 
these get plugged in to an outlet. And you can see down here, I've got a, a shielded outlet here with the ground fault um, attached to it. And then I've got this waterproof cover that goes over the timer. So you basically just need an outdoor electrical uh, outlet of some sort that you can plug things into, like you would plug a electric mower into or something. And then this covers it and it keeps it all nice and waterproof. So electrical, that's basically the only part that you're gonna have to deal with that is uh, 120 or high electricity. The other timer wire, the one that you're gonna be hooking up to the actual uh, valves down here, this is low voltage, so you're not gonna get electrocuted on this using this wire. So these wires, like I said, it depends on how many you're hooking up. So if you've got a 12 station timer, you're gonna need 12 wires, plus I think there's, a, there's two additional grounds inside here too, which you can hook those up too. Pop this open. Okay, so you can see the inside of the timer. Uh, these are grounds for the valves, and then these are all your timer stations. You can see there's one through 12, and I haven't used them all yet because I'm gonna expand this little section, which I'm gonna show you the parts that I got to expand that little section. So the first thing to do is to hang the timer, get it plugged in so that it's nice and safe if it's gonna be outside. If it's inside, you don't have to worry about it. Then you can run your, your low voltage wire, run that down to your actual valves wherever they are. So I've got some right here. I've got some around the corner. That's why that has multiple wires that are actually coming out of the timer itself. So timer out of the way, we've got that mounted. We've got it plugged in, it's operating. We've got our, now we have to tackle the, the valves here. And I'm gonna show you the little setup I have over here. So this comes in, this is a cold, this is a cold water feed. And this actually goes from here around the corner to a hose, to a hose spigot. So you can see that comes up to here to allow me to attach a hose around this corner on this, on this pipe. And then it goes down from there. Uh, we put a T in here and brought that down. And then that has a shutoff valve that is screwed into the copper here and then it transitions down into the plastic PVC versus a, a via a coupler right there. So you can see how it transitions there from the copper to where it goes down here onto the ground. Then I've got a shutoff valve here, which allows me to shut off and work on this irrigation system without it interrupting the other water supply. So you always wanna have a shutoff valve in there. I think that's very, very important so you could shut off because otherwise this is a main run. And if you get a leak up here, you need some way to shut that off or it's going to continue to flow. So that valve comes down from there. It goes into these T's here, which I'm gonna show you here in a moment. And I'm gonna show you these push T's, which I don't care for th this style anymore. This has a clear plastic center. Uh, I, I used to get these at Lowe's. They don't, I don't think they even carry these anymore, but Home Depot carries this style now of push T, which I will show you these a little bit more here in just a second. These really save my butt as far as time goes. And there's several different configurations that you can hook these up in that allows you to take off the valves if there is a problem. So what's nice about having these push T's or these connectors that you can put together without any glue is if there's ever a problem with this valve, all you have to do is take off, take a push T, pull this section out, put a new piece right back in and you're off to the races. You don't even need glue to repair something like this. This style in particular has a T right here that has a straight. And then this, this is the only part that is glued on this entire project basically is this screw fitting that goes from a your three-quarter PVC 
into a threaded um, into the threading side of the valve okay and then you have to leave enough length here to put your tool in there to take this out and then if there's ever a problem with any of your valves you can instantly replace them with just one tool you don't need glue or anything you can do it in the middle of the rain you can fix fix these anytime that you want that's why i really like these push repairs so this is one style to take the valve off where i've got the push t here and then i've got the straight and then i've got the screwed on valve which then comes out the other side of the valve basically the same way and that goes into whatever choice that you want so this case i've got a couple of these that are hard lined for pvc that go into the yard where more people walk and then the plants that go to the nursery i've got these those more on this poly line that's more flexible that people can step on and you can move around a lot easier okay so that is the basic system as of so far you need a way to tap in to get water to these valves, basically. That's gonna be your main issue, or a lot of people's main issue, is how they get their main water supply to this actual valve system. Because once you get this part fixed and associated with, that, that would be fine. And I do believe you could probably come off of this valve side and this faucet somehow if you had to. Like most people are gonna have something like this in their backyard. And I believe you could adapt off of this somehow to start this irrigation system basically, which would basically be the start here where this valve begins. But the way I had this set up on this particular side is that's brought in from the main off that copper. And then it comes in to feed all of these different valves. So let's sort of recap this little area real quick. Okay, it's gonna be your valves or I'm sorry, your controllers. That's the brains of the system. That's gonna run wires down to your valve system. And all these are, are an on and off switch that are gonna open different valves to your yard. Okay, so you got your main water supply that comes in here and it feeds however many valves that you want. So in this case, you know, there's one here, two here, they go back that direction and they go this direction too. And I'm also gonna continue that a little bit further down this direction. I'm gonna be adding another five valves onto this side so that each one of these different valves can control like every different section of my yard perfectly. I wanted it to be a like an internet network out here of water, just like I've got the plants. So not everything's on the same line or on the same system. This is a highly flexible, way of doing this that's still really really cheap okay so um kind of go back on this the timers in particular these i believe were around 50 dollars, and i think i got them at, at lowe's so if you only have one timer and now you're into it for 50 dollars, now you're going to need a way into your water system and that's probably going to be the most expensive thing on this project especially if you have to get a plumber to do this part of the system. But once you get that, that switch in there, that valve, then you can add on whatever you want to to this system. And since it's all clicked together, like I showed you those parts and I'm gonna show you them a little bit more here inside, they click together and so you don't even need glue anymore. And it, actually there would be a way for me to do this one without even using glue, because there's another part that I'll show you that clicks in there too. So really, you wouldn't need glue anymore for any of this system the way that they have everything clicked together. Now, could you glue it together? Yes, and it would be cheaper because those T's being a glued part are going to be, you know, a quarter the price of what these are. Now, these aren't that expensive. I think they're around $2.50 or $3 a, a piece, and you don't need very many of them, so it doesn't add up to very much. Now, if you did this in a solid PVC system, which I'll show you here in just a little bit, then it would be even cheaper so, because these little parts would be, you know, a dollar or a dollar 50 or whatever. So it wouldn't cost very much to add in these valves. Let's talk about the valves real quick too. So these, I like these valves. These are a Rainbird uh, valve. I get these at Home Depot. I think they're around $16. Um, very cheap, heavy duty, 
Uh, these are three quarter. These happen to have, um, these happen to have an, uh, an adjustability for the flow, but I don't really need that because I, I use them fully open basically and regulate that by the dripper head. So the other normal kind are just fine. And so these are around $16. I think these are around $26. So for the $10 more for the flow regulation, I didn't even really need that because you can control that by other ways. So now we've got 50, about $50 into a timer. We've got the main system here, which that could cost you nothing or to get a plumber. I don't know what it would cost you to add this part on. Um, and then as far as the rest of this goes, you can go get these parts and put this together yourself because all these parts they sell at the, like I said, at the local hardware stores, or you can order these, all these parts online. So to add a smaller system, it's not going to cost you that much. $16, 16, 16, 16, whatever that is, 64. Um, you can put a nice cover over them like, like these irrigation covers. You can put something like this over them and then you won't even see any of those valves there. You can even cover this up with, with a little bit of mulch and, and make it completely disappear. Now, the reason why I like doing it on top of the ground is, is because I like to see all the plumbing and all the irrigation in case there is an issue. Anytime these are dug and sunk into the ground, which absolutely makes no sense to me at all whatsoever, and there's a leak down in there, nobody ever knows it. Like, these leak forever, and they leak in all different parts. The valves go bad. Like, these are just a pain in the butt when they're buried because they get filled in with dirt. They get dirty. Uh, people lose them. They don't know where they are. They never repair anything because they're buried so deep that Nobody can ever get to them, so they don't. So this lays on top, and actually you can see that it goes down into the ground a little bit and into the mulch, and it sort of disappears. You can completely hide all of your lines if you would like to. So I really, really like this setup because I think it's smart, and I think it's efficient, and like I said, you could really get to everything, see everything, and click all the parts together. The PVC is not that expensive. I think it's around $3 a stick. And one stick would definitely put together this entire system because you only need a couple small little pieces between each of these little parts. You want to give yourself enough room to, if you need to put a tool in there and take this off, that you can take these T's back off again, whether you've got a leak here or here or here or here or here you can fix these now because you can see them you can physically see them leaking or dripping and you can get to all these parts and keep them all nice and clean actually they stay a lot cleaner and uh more working working better as far as that goes above the ground which you would think the opposite but once they're buried down in there with all that all that grit and that dirt like these things look terrible like look in some of people's irrigation boxes it looks it looks pretty bad and you can kind of lay this out really really nice and have all your pipes laid out so that everything is nice and sy symmetrical everything runs in line with each other you can see all these lines are all nice and straight and they all go to different parts of the yard depending on what they are assigned to okay so it's the timer, the brains of the operation, which feeds the rest of this system. I'm going to show you a few more real quick. Okay, so this is a, another little system or another part of the yard that I have here. And this basically follows the same setup. It just uses slightly different parts than the other one. This uses more of the glue on parts. And the reason I did this is because I needed to do... A certain thing with this and those push tees are not available uh, in a cross like like I wanted here so I wanted this these to be nicely fed across from each other like you see here right because that looks neat and organized and then you can put a you can put a lid over that also and that will cover all this 
those valves up and it also gives you an opportunity to really look at this and keep this clean and also check for leaks because see if there was any leaks in under any of these fittings it would really show up on the concrete the concrete would be wet in that area where it was leaking so you can see that this is on it's pressurized and there are no leaks on this system so this just uses a slightly different system guys but i'm going to show you how this one works and this might work more like what you have at your house maybe so this comes up here and you can see that this once was a hose spigot that came out here so all i did with that is took off the hose spigot put on a t put on my regular hose valve so that i can use my regular hoses my water hoses that i wanted to use and also use the evaporative cooler off of this side so that's what this valve controls is it controls these which are all controlled individually these are just garden hoses but then it comes down split off of that it comes down right off of this this would normally be a water spigot right it's just reversed and it's moved up it's teed up in this direction and then this goes down this way into a valve this is the shutoff valve for this irrigation system it goes into a copper and then it goes into a transition here into a a pvc so this if you didn't want to get a plumber to add on a t into your system like the other one had then you could just add on a t system like this put your garden hose back up wherever you want it and then go down to your irrigation system here and then lay it out like this and these are all glue on parts here the way i did this one just to kind of show you a different little example on this one is these are glued here this is the hard line which is always pressurized from the main feed and so is this here but then we needed a way to get off the valves if there was a problem because they screw on and being so close to the ground here obviously you can't screw off that valve so you have to have a push fitting and they make these really cool little uh, push you can see them here these little push pvc locks and that screws into this side of the valve the flow side and then it just clicks onto the pvc t here it just pushes on so if there's ever a problem with this valve all you have to do is take their the little key the little tool and pull this valve off right here and replace the valve and put a new one right back on and you're off to the races again it's a very very simple way of doing this and for not that much money guys <clears throat> the timer 50 bucks these valves 16 dollars i think these push tees here were probably around two dollars and fifty cents a stick of pvc which will cost you you know two dollars and fifty cents your push connect or glue connectors in this case which are cheaper so these are a couple bucks here right and then see this goes on to this main goes on to feed another set of valves that are around the corner that direction so this one feeds this section but i can turn off all the irrigation with this valve right here i can just turn this one off and it shuts off everything to the irrigation so now i can do work on this if it's leaking and i'm not going to affect my main water supply in my house <clears throat> So I just I think it's a lot cleaner like this and a lot lot easier to get to and treat it more like a piece of art instead of you know burying this underneath the ground and not not ever seeing any of it. If you do it all all nice, it really looks good. And like I said, you can really check for leaks. If it's like this, you can always monitor for leaks, but if it's underneath the ground, you can't see anything. And you would think that this would rot in the sun in Arizona being up here like this but it gets covered with this cover and then obviously you can just paint the pvc the other pvc that is exposed to the sun or cover it with foam you know just protect your things you know it's arizona so don't let this stuff turn brown in the sun you know protect it like you would anything else and your irrigation system will last for a long time i've never had these fail i've had these for 10 plus years working and these seem to be awesome little valves that's why i like the the rainbird 
valves. I don't care for the orbit valves, but I like the orbit timer. I don't care for the Rainbird timer. So I guess I kind of mix those together, but you can kind of see how all these pieces fit together. Very, very, very cheap if you can get all these parts. I do recommend getting this piece out of copper and not doing this shutoff valve out of plastic down here because that plastic could fail on you, whereas these ball valves are really nice for shutting off that water supply with a little quarter turn, right? There we go, we're on and off. So then that feeds this. Then the timer, like I said earlier, feeds wires that are these low voltage wires. You can see it a lot better here. And you buy this in a strand. So this comes in five wire and seven wire and maybe even nine wire. I don't know what all it comes in. Um, we've got, what do we have here? One, two, three, four, five. This is five wire. So four of the, the four of them would be hooked up to the valves. <clears throat> and then one of them would tie to the ground, which would connect one wire from each of these together and then go to the ground of the timer. So really the hardest part about this is going to be picking where you want the things to lie. So the timer, you got to pick where you want it to be versus getting to these because the shorter or the closer you can get it to these, the better, obviously, because then you can keep the wire shorter. But you can run a really long wire to these if you have to. But it's nicer if you can keep everything all nice and neat and clean. Um, right up here around the corner to this one, I'm going to be running another, another um, valve box, which I just put in here. And this is another orbit orbit valve box and this one is wired to a outdoor outlet also which is protected and then this one is extremely close to this valve system so i've got electricity and i've got water right here by each other which is ideal now if you have to run things separately it's not that big of a deal probably your longest wire is going to be this one which is the low voltage wire, which you don't have to worry about getting electrocuted on running this one. This one's gonna run wherever you run this one. So now I'm gonna show you the parts sort of laid out as I bought them, which is basically just a recap of what is right here because I'm gonna be adding on to the system today, expanding it with a few more valves. Okay, okay. So yeah, these are your basic parts. I've just got them laid out here in pieces so that you can see them. There's not that many pieces, especially if you're expanding on um, and you've already got the timer piece. So you've got the PVC, which is cheap. You've got your valves, which are the $16. Uh, these Rainbird valves. You've got these here, right? You've got in this case, what I'm using is the screw on that will screw onto the back of this valve. And then a piece will come off of that, which will push lock into this T here, which requires no glue. So there's that component. And then these are all linked together with PVC also, and they are just pushed together also. Now these parts here, I just got these in a bag of 10, I think there were four bucks or something like that. Um, a bag of these, of these screw locks, these are cheap. So then these, like I said, a piece goes from here to here and that links the whole system together. So you can kind of see the way that it's pre laid out here. One thing I didn't talk about is the exit on the valve and what to choose for that. And really that is up to you depending on whether you're going to hard line it or putting on the poly line. And I've got, what I like to do is if I'm using the hard line PVC on the exit side is I will put the, use one of these on this side also. So you've got one on each side. If I'm using poly line, what I like to do is use these, which I also get these at Home Depot. I don't know if they'll even focus in. And these screw onto the exit side 
of the valve and these allow you to just push lock the uh, 5 8 poly or half inch poly into these and it locks it in and then if you ever want to take these back off again all you have to do is push the sides on this and that will take off the poly line so everything is nice and removable without using so much glue which i just i i don't like this i just can't stand the smell of that stuff for one that stuff is bad bad news so i don't like to use it i mean the, this plastic using this is bad enough uh let alone inhaling all that glue <laughs> so that being said there's not very many parts to this actual system uh, this is about as complicated as it gets are these parts right here and like I said you can get these all at Home Depot or Lowe's or online it's a very simple system and once you get these laid out exactly mapped out how you want them then they just click and screw together you can have this done in 10 minutes and then link this whole system onto the rest of the system you can kind of see here we've got a T here and then this runs through each valve down it comes around to the last one and then it tees down to a 90. this side is going to connect on to the side that i was just showing you in the first part and here we are back out here so i can show you that part so that part that i was showing you just a minute ago that i'm putting and building together that part will simply go on to the end of this part so this has a slip connector this 90 will be removed i'll put on that t which i just showed you earlier and then that will continue down this row here so that that valve network is just connected onto this side so that is an easy way to expand if you want to start out with just a couple valves or one valve or two valves you can get a timer that will run 12 valves so that you've got something that's definitely going to expand to what you want and then you can start with one valve if you want and then add on another one and add on another one and add on another one and depending on how you want to lay that out and map your yard out is you can have as many of these as you want doing different things at different times on different plants and it, you don't have to have this many but this is just the way that I chose to lay this out so that each little section has its own specific little climate and water needs that it needs. But I'm going to be expanding onto this to fill the rest of that valve box up with wires because I've only got seven of these connected and I can add five more on. So I'm going to add the five more on and then this one will be full, but it gives you plenty of options. If you want to run some to your garden and some to your, your citrus trees and some to your deciduous trees and some to your you know you you got you got multiple areas that you could hook this water up to if you want to some of your potted plants would probably appreciate that also um so yeah guys uh trying to keep this right at about this time now so if you've made it to this end of this video thank you for watching and please subscribe obviously and go out there and get these parts it's a very simple way to do it and put together your own irrigation system without spending a ton of money i don't know exactly how much this is because i didn't add this up which i probably should have done for the video but you can easily do it yourself it's 16 dollars each plus these little pieces and parts which aren't that much you can get them really cheap even you know a dollar for the the glue connectors if you want to do that but then remember you're also buying glue and inhaling glue so i like these push connectors for that reason i'll pay you know a couple bucks more for these it's no big deal and then your timer so you're looking at probably i would say you know a hundred bucks to you know two hundred dollars to have a fully operational setup system that you know what it does exactly because you put it in because it wasn't rocket science for you to put this in i mean a lot of you guys are smart and i know you can put together these these parts i think a lot of it was just you had no idea what they do and how hard it would be to plumb this and you've never done anything like that before so it's you know but it's one of the easier do-it-yourself jobs i would say and especially if you get these these push connectors <clears throat> it'll really make your life your life a lot easier on you 
and then you just run your lines to wherever you want them to go guys and you can use different kinds of lines depending on which fittings that you're using as far as sprinklers go or sprayers go or emitters or drip emitters so yeah i'm hoping this is a a pretty simple fast easy way for you guys to set up your own water system i'm thinking probably the hardest or the longest thing is going to take you is probably to either go to the store and get the parts or get the main feed hooked up off of your water supply system and like i said you can do it a couple different ways this way i wanted it you know nice and done hard off just dedicated to this but you could do it off of you know your hose spigot like i showed you the one that i did earlier you know where i ran it down to those valves and i did it that way so you can even do it that way without using a plumber i would think so i would think you could be able to do this project for very 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 cheap guys it's just a matter of what all these different things are for and then all these wires which obviously it's only one wire to each one of these up to your timer guys so they're labeled like i showed you one wire of each one of those wires that comes off the solenoid is going to go to 1 through 12 and then the other wire is going to be hooked up to that common ground that you see there on the left hand side so extremely extremely easy guys i don't know what even to compare this to because this takes so little time that it is it is ridiculous and like I said, you can lay it all out clean, 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 clean. I, I, I like everything mapped out and laid out in like perfect little frame and grid work. And I have to have everything nice and straight and perfect or it really, really bothers me. So, all right, guys, that is it. Thank you for watching and hope you enjoyed.